Carolina and Company Live is sponsored by the businesses, organizations, and groups featured in this program. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect that of WPDE ABC 15, WWMB CW 21, or its employees. You're watching Carolina and Company Live. Your source for fun, entertainment, and events. With your host, Cecil Chandler and Amanda Sellers. If it's happening in the area, it's on Carolina and Company Live. And hello, everybody. Welcome to Carolina and Company Live. Guess what? It is Wednesday, and we call that hump day because if you make it over today, you can make it to the weekend. I can. I'm going to make it. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, feel buddy. Good. I feel oh, good. that's not what Brandon just told me. Uh oh. We do have <laughs> a great show. Never listen to your director. <laughs> Never listen to your director. We do have a great show lined up, but first we're going to check out what our weather's doing. All right, well, we've changed uh, and traded in our cirrus clouds from Tropical Storm Gordon, now Depression Gordon, uh, for some cumulus clouds. The sea breeze already getting going. Temperatures in the 80s, 91 in Florence, 90 in Sumter. It's going to feel a lot hotter today, folks. We're talking near 102 for feels like temperatures across the PD and the border belt and up to 96 there along the Grand Strand. Notice that sea breeze marching its way inland by 4 o'clock. Now, I'm not expecting a lot of widespread activity along the sea breeze, but where those showers and storms form along coastal portions of Orion and Georgetown County, I do believe they'll be able to maintain, maintain themselves, excuse me, by the time they reach Marion, Florence, Darlington, Dillon counties. So I do believe the PD and Border Belt will see a little bit of moisture this afternoon. Not everybody will. But if those showers and storms develop along the sea breeze, I do believe they will march their way inland. High temps today near 90 at the coastline, the mid 90s inland. And like I said, feeling like 102 across PD and the border belt and feeling more like 96 along the Grand Strand. Copy and paste what we see today for the next seven days. No sense in showing you our long term forecast when it's going to be the same thing. What we can do is talk about the tropics. Hurricane Florence, a category three. We'll touch on that. Two waves coming off of Africa. One has a 90% chance. I do believe this will be Helene by Friday. Still plenty of time to watch that one. Another one coming off more than likely will organize into Tropical Storm Isaac next Tuesday. The reason the odds are so low, only 30% because it goes out through five days. Five days from now is Sunday. So by next Tuesday, expect those odds to really creep back up. Tropical depression, Gordon. Yes, this is now a depression. The banner needs to be changed, but winds of 30 miles per hour. Flash flood warnings from Escambia County all the way up through portions of Montgomery, Alabama. This rain will continue to follow this area of low pressure through the Midwest, and we are talking substantial rain here, folks. Three to five inches locally as high as 10 and this area dealt with flooding this week. That is not a good forecast. Hurricane Florence, it's a category three. Was it supposed to be? No, it was actually supposed to be a tropical storm. It's defied every intensity forecast out there. This is the first major hurricane of the 2018 Atlantic hurricane season. And to be honest with you, with all this dry air, there's a little bit of southwesterly shear to it. Our intensity forecast, we're going to tell you it's weakening, but more than likely the storm has made us look like fools and it's probably going to continue to make us look like fools. Uh, the intensity forecast will be better once we get out here, but in the short term, I just don't trust it. The track continuing to the northwest, we will have to watch the storm as it approaches Saturday and Sunday. Will the storm head towards our region or head out to sea? We'll have a better idea come Saturday and Sunday. Like I said, copy and paste today's forecast for the rest of the week. Yeah, not much of a change. High temp still above average. All right, welcome back to Carolina and Company Live. All right, I've got to give a shout out to my friend Flora. Let's see if we got a picture of her. The other night, went into Shiki Sushi, and she was so excited to see me and meet me. She said she watches the show every day. So, hi, Flora. Um, we, you know, for hi from me and Cecil. We hi, thank Flora. you so much for watching. All right, we're going to tell you about something we're putting together coming up near the end of September. We're talking about recipes. Now, if you've got an old family recipe, I want you to send it to us. That's right. Give, or give me a call here at the station and we'll get you lined up. <clears throat> what we want you to do is come be on the show, make that recipe. Yep. 
Bring us the recipe. We'll put it up where everybody can get it. Absolutely. Sounds good to me. I mean, I, I think it's a great way also to honor maybe somebody in your family who has That's a great right. recipe that you grew up eating. I think it's pretty cool. So give us a call. Yeah, we need you to line pretty quick now if you can get in touch with us. All right, let's talk about haberdashery. All right. Clothes, Very okay? nice. And guess what? All right. It's the last time I'll be wearing this. We it's match. out of weather. It's out That's right. Okay, it's out of time, brother. <laughs> all right, let's talk about haberdashery. The haberdashery could be going back to school with all the new collegiate wear they have in their historic Conway store. Southern Tide has come up with some very cool t-shirt designs for Gamecocks, Tigers, and Shauna Clears. The new designs are soft and incredibly comfortable, and if you like the new performance fabric, you'll love the polos, the CCU Teal Blazer. Now, they're, they're so versatile that you can wear them almost every day, just like you do your Navy Blazer. That's right. The haberdashery is going more and more collegiate every year, so come by and take a look at all of their new game attire. Don't forget, Teal Tuesday rolls around every week. All right, let's talk about today. Today is Wednesday, September the 5th, and it is National Shrink Day. I think it's good to have a therapist. <laughs> yes. It's a good thing, right? Or does it mean shrink your clothes? I don't I know. think shrink, like okay. us and somebody. And this is also outlaw Jesse James's birthday back <laughs> in 1847. Right. All right, birthdays for today, 1929, Bob Newhart, 89 years old, TV's Bob Newhart Show, did the Dean Martin Show and the Ed Sullivan Show. He hosted The Tonight Show 87 times, and before fame, he was an accountant. All right, 1940, Raquel Welch. Wow, 78 years old, international sex symbol in the 60s. And uh, let's say she was in the movie One Million Years B.C., legally blonde, and the oldest profession. Still looking good at 78. All right, 1961, Michael Keaton, 67 years old, movies Beetlejuice, Batman, Batman Returns, Birdman, and before fame, he worked as a TV cameraman. He hosted Saturday Night Live several times, and, and go ahead, Cecil. And when he was at a college, speaking to a college, when he finished, he said the greatest quote of all time, remember, I am Batman. I love it. I bet I they love loved that. it, too. Very all right, good. today in history, let's go back to 1987. American Bandstand was canceled after 30 years on television. Dick Clark. That's right. 1990, B.B. King received his uh, star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. All right. From the Know-It-All Department, I love this one. We get okay. some good ones once in a while. An old man gained the trust of a Belgian bank by bringing the workers chocolate. Therefore, he was given VIP access to the bank vault. Wow. And in 2007, yeah. he stole $28 million in diamonds. <laughs> and all he had to do was take him some cookies. What in the world? From the know-it-all department today. Boy, I, I love that. Okay, so if that's a fact we're reporting. Did he get caught? I didn't say that part. But we're he said he got away know. with the money. That's right. We've got a great show lined up. We'll be back. All right, coming up, we're talking about the 7th Annual North Carolina Bookham Writers Conference, and it's going to be at Robinson Community College in Lumberton. It's set for September 22nd. Now, this is a big event, brings in a lot of guests. Yeah. And Dennis is here to talk with us about it. That's right. Let's talk about the Bookham Writers Conference. You know, this brings in a lot of guest authors. Tell us a little bit about the event. It does. We uh, have 39 authors coming this year. We've got three headliners that are major national authors. We've got Elizabeth Massey, who is one two Bram Stoker Awards wow. from the American Horror Writers Association. <laughs> She's also worked with uh, the Showtime series, uh, The Tudors. She's done some writing for them. Uh, we've got uh, Jeff Mudgett coming in. Jeff's got a really neat story. Jeff did the genealogy's big today. You guys know that. Sure. Um, Jeff did some genealogy and found out he's the great, great, great grandson of Herman Mudgett, 
who goes by who went by the name in the eighteen hundreds of H. H. Holmes and admitted to oh. killing twenty seven people and he was eventually executed, but they really believe that he may have killed over two hundred people. So he's used so this much to write his, his writing about Whoa. this story. That's wow. Right. Very Another interesting cool. thing about his uh, great 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 grandfather was that he was in London on a trip during some of the time when Jack the Ripper was Active, so there are some mm. folks that think he may may have you know, been actually, may have actually, actually been. been wow! Director. So what a really yeah. neat, a, a really <laughs> neat. Who can come to this conference? Anyone. It's open to the public. Uh, it's, it's a free event. Uh, we have sponsors that cover the cost of it, so we don't have to charge admission. That's fantastic. That's good. Um, registration fees, sale proceeds from the books that uh, book the Bookham organization does pro get some of that uh, proceeds. And all of those monies are used for literacy projects within within the community, 100 percent, because sponsors cover. It gets big. It gets bigger every year, doesn't it? Does, it, it does. It's a it's a really neat event. We'll have folks that come, and they'll you know they'll tell us they'll come one year just to kind of see what's happening. At the end, they always say, "Well, I'll be back next year." Some of them come back the next year, and they're they're get their authors. Very cool. Yeah. And then some oh, of neat. them, some of those authors may come back a few years later. We have there during the day we have the authors are lined up so you can talk to the authors that yeah, kind of thing. But there are also so cool. seminars, educational kind of stuff, okay. how to get started, how to overcome writer's block. So it's a how full to get day. published. It's a full, a full day. day. There's stuff and for the kids. It's a uh, everything a kids corner. Awesome. Okay. Two thirds of our participants are okay. kids and parents. All right. Dennis, thank you, buddy, for coming all the cool. way down. Absolutely. North Carolina. That's right. Thank September 22nd. Check out the website. You saw it just a second ago for all the information. Thanks for being with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Carolina and Company Live. The city of Myrtle Beach, they've made some changes for the Chapin Library. They're breaking down barriers, and we're going to find out just what that means. That's right. They have extended their, uh, you know, the opportunity to come check books out That's right. to a lot of different counties. Yeah, really we're awesome. Gonna, we're going to find out from Jennifer now. Jennifer, tell us the reason, what's it all about, the change, and then we'll find out why. Yeah. So we have uh, now allowed library free library cards to um, not only Horry County, but lots of uh, counties in the PD. And the reason for that, that would be um, Georgetown Library or Georgetown County, Dillon, Darlington, Marion, Marlboro, and okay. Sumter counties. Okay. And the reason is just to break down obstacles for people to get free library cards. Uh, we really need people to have access for their children, for them to work on low literacy and to combat illiteracy. And, and I think that's the biggest thing. The literacy rates are not, not good. No, they're you not. Know, <laughs> and, and so anything you guys can do to help, and this is just one way. Absolutely. Um, low literacy and illiteracy affects job readiness and the ability for people to get good paying jobs and it affects crime rates too. So Absolutely. the city wants to be a good neighbor and be a champion for this effort. And if we can help our neighbors, ourselves, um, improve literacy rates, help kids just become better readers, get through school um, as, as strong readers, then we'll be doing good. our community well, favor. The great thing Absolutely. about it is people come to the beach, they'll say two or three weeks at the beach, mm -hmm. and if they're used to going to the library in their area, you know, they won't be able to have to go and do all this other stuff, but this gives them the opportunity to check out books and, and read everything. Absolutely. If they're living in one of these counties, they can definitely have access to those resources at the beach. They can even have access to our digital resources. So if they go home, they'll still be able to maybe download an audio book for their drive home or okay. their next trip to the beach. Now, now, go ahead. What are some of the other things that the uh, library offers to them? I know it's internet and everything. Yeah, library is a lot different even from the library I used as a child. Uh, of course, we, we love our books, but we also have of plenty of educational resources. We have programs for people to come and maybe they want to learn a new skill, maybe learn ballroom dancing or attend a legal clinic so they can learn about consumer law. Uh, we have lots of different that. things. Yeah, musical performances. You know, that's, that's where great. that's where Dawson goes to play chess. Really? Yes. My little boy <laughs> yes. goes to play chess, yes. which is awesome. That's just a perfect example of what you guys Thank are you so doing. Much, More information, chapinlibrary.org. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. We'll be back. Welcome back to Carolina and Company Library. We have an author on the show. We love having local authors on the show. Today has written a book called The Heart and Soul of Caring. We're going to find out a little bit about what this book means. Yeah, this is a story about caretaker. If you're a caretaker, my yeah. wife and I are caretakers for her mom now. And uh, it's a lot to it. And, and sure. Robert, let's tell us a little bit about the book. What, I mean, a tough yeah. job. It is. It a is very job. much for it. And, and it, it really affects about one in six Americans right now is, is involved in a caregiving kind of relationship. And in this particular book, I, I, went, I woke up one morning and just thought <laughs> I needed to do this book. But the, the difference with this particular one is I really wanted to focus on the care receiver and yeah. talk about who that individual was. Because so many times in the caregiving um, process, yeah. you, we sometimes forget about the care receiver, you know, just being involved in the caregiving aspect. Okay. All right, now, did this come from a personal, you know, reason that you put this book together? 
Well, I, I do have personal experience with that. I mean, are you a caretaker? And not at the moment, okay. not at the moment, but um, for the, the people that I, I um, got to do the stories are people who are in my circle, and I, and I just you know, constantly hear about the challenges yeah. of being a caregiver. Now that's yeah, pretty hard. Absolutely. All right, now where can they find the book? It's on, it's on Amazon.com and okay. uh, Lulu.com. I bet these are some really yeah. touching stories. I love person, you know, kind of personal reflections. And so it was probably neat. How long did it take you to gather all of this? Well, it actually took quite a while, but like a year and a half, um, sure. really, to get it. And, and the first one was my sister, who was a caregiver for my, my mother. Awesome. And um, and when she submitted the story, there were things that were involved in that relationship that I didn't know about. So. So you learned something, yes. even about your own family. Exactly. So Very that's cool. what I thought that you know these kinds of stories can teach people. Sometimes. All right, I was looking on I the front. These are the pictures that actually stories are about in here. Yes, very sir. Very cool. Okay, yes, sir. that's very neat. I think it's really neat. You know, my mom was a caregiver to um, both of my grandmothers, um, and I, I watched what that did. I lived in the home at that point, and um, I, I think this is awesome. Yeah. I think yeah. it's really and great. That's, that's the one thing, too, is, is the being a role model for the younger generation as to what you know caregiving is all about. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, it, Amazon.com. It's a tough com. job, too. It it's is tough. Being a caretaker. It is, absolutely. Yes. All right, yeah. if you are interested in Thank this book, Amazon.com, you. you can find it, The Heart and Soul of Caring. Stick around. We'll be back. And welcome back, everybody. It's a Wednesday, and now we're going to talk about the food pantry at the Community Center for Myrtle Beach. We'll be giving out food twice a month. But right now, they're trying to get a clinic set up. That's right. And we've got two, William and Kevin with us now, and Kevin's here going to talk with us first a little bit about it. I yeah, think. and funny enough, you said that you used you're a retired I'm therapist. I'm a retired shrink. Yes, a shrink. And it's National, National Shrink. National we National knew shrink you had you on for go. a reason. <laughs> I love it. See, he'll be here to talk to Perfect you afterwards. Time. Great. Um, let's talk about what you guys are doing and, and what you need. Donations, um, food, what do you guys need? Don't Donations food. Phoenix Renaissance through Reverend Gauls has been in town for about 35 years. Uh, there's been a joint effort with the county and so now we have a brand new building uh, on the corner of Tatum and Race Path, almost in the Bob Grissom and 501 intersection area. So now Phoenix can expand its services. Great. So right. we're looking now to continue the existing services. Uh, the food pantry will be our uh, first day this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. 
All right. All right, and it's going to be operating how many days? Like two days a week uh, right now? Uh, uh, first, uh, second Tuesday, I'm sorry, second Tuesday of each month, and then we're hoping to add a second, uh, or I'm sorry, let me back up, second Saturday of each month. And then we're hoping to add a subsequent Saturday as well. Okay, right. which which would be great for the community. Right. Reverend God, I want to talk about the clinic. That's what I mean. A clinic. What, clinic. what, what, is what does this it? mean? Is that a picture of it? That's the building. Oh, that's, that's the, the new building. building. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Let's talk about it. About the clinic and why y'all want to do this. Well, down through the years, uh, we never had a building big enough to provide any services, even for our 63 kids that we had this summer. Right. Um, now we have a building big enough to provide services such as the clinic and uh, outreach, you know, food pantry and many other projects that we have in store, you know, coming up. And so it's a need because we know that, you know, everybody don't have insurance You're right. and how difficult it is to get a, you know, get attention from the doctor. So we decided to deal with um, Friendship Medical Clinic Great. and Common Medical and come together and try to work out something. So now so that, that you guys yeah. have the building and the space, you're, uh, it allows you to provide more services. Yes, yeah. ma'am, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right, But you still good. need money. You don't have enough money here. Yeah. Yes, right, we, we, we need money um, we, uh, for sure. We need donations as we expand the services, and we need folks who can volunteer their mm -hmm. time uh, and their talents to help with uh, the various things we're doing in the community as well. Lots of All need right. that we have in this community that thank people just both. aren't aware of. So thank, thank you for bringing some light to Thank you for having that. us. Appreciate thank it. All right. All right, we got more coming up. Stay with us. We'll be right back. I learned a lot too. I, I mean, I didn't know he was retired you know, shrink, so it was National Shrink Day for him. He said he's waiting in the office. <laughs> <laughs> he's waiting. I tell you, thank you so much. We asked you all the time to tell one person about the show. They That's just right. moved here. You want to learn about the area? Watch this show. That's right. And we love our viewers. Like I said before, you know, just seeing somebody out in public, it, it was awesome. We love our viewers. We love that you watch the show and that you support us. We have a lot of fun, and we hope that you guys get to have a lot of fun with us. That's right. Tomorrow's Friday. The weekend is here, everybody. And I know that's what Tomorrow's you're looking for. Friday. That's not it. Uh, Thursday, March Thursday. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Here we go. I'm getting rid of my director. My director is leaving. He's always zooming in on me. Carolina and Company Live is sponsored by the businesses, organizations, and groups featured in this program. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect that of WPDE ABC 15, WWMB CW 21, or its employees.